Well, that's the one Moroccan shawarma where we are eating food from today. It's an absolutely fascinating road. I will come here again. If I could meet myself when I was in my early 20s, get drunk with him, probably end up in a fight. Yeah, if I met myself in my early 20s, I'd kick my teeth in. <laughs> I was an absolute twat. They're not really <clears throat> known for being particularly attractive uh, political ladies, are they? Two words, Anne Whittacombe. What about them? Is that your choice? Oh, yeah. Fucking okay, hell. Gosh. I'd love to have a go on Anne Whittacombe. Situated on the thriving foodie community on Milkstone Road in Rochdale, Moroccan Shawarma is a busy and very highly rated restaurant selling Moroccan street food. So that's very gentlemanly of you to wait for me. Of course. So you're doing a solo video today because my phone's on charge in the car, which is uh, the best place to make sure it doesn't charge it very quickly. And I've got a pizza. Moroccan foodstuffs. Yeah. And I have got some form. Oh, a napkin. Nice. Oh, I say. Oh, check this out, my loves. I've got no idea if I'm pointing you at it. But what we have here is some, dear me, my goodness me, all wrapped up in an iron. Right. I want that one. Yeah, you see. Of course. Could tackle it with hands alone, but that's just not civilized, is it? I would if I was in bed. What? Just use your hands. Hmm. What sort of bed are you talking about? Water bed? Any bed. Hotel bedroom. Mm. You can't beat eating a good kebab in a hotel bedroom. Do you not like olives? <clears throat> I prefer Susan's. They're smaller and less intimidating. Olives are a bit. Didn't know you knew olives. The first word that springs to mind is bland. Really? Mm. Needs spice. Needs windella peppers. Thank <laughs> you. 
You could do with the plate. Put that on the list for next time. Hmm. Go away. Go away, you impudent rascal. <clears throat> Damn cheeks. Pet wasp. Yeah, I mean, it's not unpleasant in any way, shape, or form. It's just a bit bland. <clears throat> you prefer chipping? Than this, yeah. Wow. The naan is underdone. You like a naan bread crispy? Mmm. <clears throat> well, no. I'm halfway through already. And how are you finding it? Well, I like it. But I've had one of these before. I find it to be um, very good. I suppose. If I had some black pepper with it, I'd be sprinkling quite a lot of it on there. Everything benefits from black pepper. Mm. Yeah, it does. Are there any dishes where you would go white instead of black? Cheese sandwich. White pepper? Mm. Uh, <clears throat> the um <clears throat> Masaka topping. Got what you call it. I can't think what Masaka is. Well, that surprises me. Oh, is it aubergine? Is it? Yeah. Is it like um, <coughs> lamb mince, almost uh, bolognese, out, with a eggy, milky topping? Oh, is that one of the things in you know, tagine? Oh, what? Tagine. Well, one thing that never fails to bring joy is pickled red cabbage. Mm. It is a wonderful, wonderful thing. Bray Bentos pies, they never fail to bring joy either. The ones in the tin? Yeah, Keith Floyd always used to travel with one. So I remember, I remember really liking those, but I always thought it was a bit cheap. They're not bloody cheap now. Mm. No, cheap image. Oh. It would be in some ways, though, wouldn't it? Because you've got a pie sealed in a tin so it lasts forever. Mm -hmm. So they don't have to sell them quickly. Oh, 
I would like your gut. <laughs> I think you're going into a supermarket and asking if you got they've got any pies, and they say, oh, "We got some new old stock here." <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they would sell them by vintage, like they do with wine. Mm. <clears throat> I'm after a Frey Ventus pie, steak and ale. Yeah, what year were you looking for, sir? Oh, I'd like a 1976. That was an excellent year for steak and ale. Mm. Oh, I've got one, sir, but that would be over 400 pounds. I've got a cheeky little 99 that I could let you have. It's a bit young and fresh, is that? How much posted? I would like to have got drunk with Keith Floyd. If you could spend an evening getting drunk with three people, alive or dead, who would you choose? Um, that's the kind of thing I would actually quite like to answer on video. <laughs> no, I mean, that's the kind of thing I could answer a few times. Okay. Different people. So three people's not really enough. Throw some names in the hat. Um, can't think of any. That's not true, obviously. James May. I quite like to get drunk with him. Mm. Uh, myself. Good show. If I could have, um, if I could meet myself when I was in my early 20s, get drunk with him, I'd probably end up in a fight. Yeah, if I met myself in my early 20s, I'd kick my teeth in. <laughs> I was an absolute twat. Richard Burton would be right up on my list. Dylan Thomas. And, go for the obvious one, Clarkson. Clarkson would be fun to get pissed with. Yeah. Peter Ustinov. Frankie Boyle. Never heard of him. Well, he's Scottish. Oh, well, if we're going with Scots. I was going to say Billy Connolly, but no. Because obviously he doesn't drink now and hasn't done for some while. Yeah, well, you did say alive or dead, so presumably. Uh, it's not, you know, you, you could have him in the past. Yeah, but I was going to go on and say that when he was drinking, he was, you couldn't drink with him because it wasn't safe. Ah. Just ask Michael Parkinson. Who's uh. oh, that bloke uh, from the 70s, well known for being a pisshead? Oliver someone. Oliver Reed. That's Oliver what... Reed. Mm. He died in Malta. Yeah. Uh, there's a bar named after him where he died. Well, but would you want to get drunk with a raving up with a raving drunkard? No. <clears throat> no, I like people who can properly have a full evening of, of drinking, but always stay within the limit of. I think James May was a good shout. That would be a really good evening, I imagine. Mm. How about you? Could I choose you? Mm. What, living or dead? <laughs> <laughs> what about Wogan? Mm. Funny <laughs> enough, I watched that episode of Top Gear the other day where he drove the car. 
No one's going to die here. <clears throat> I think he was the best guest he ever had. My favourite guest was when he had Kristin Scott uh, Thomas on there. Oh, yeah. And he got all excited and put his suit on and everything. And tried to pretend he had an electric car. <coughs> Sebastian Vettel was a good guest. <coughs> yeah. About John Prescott. Yeah, why not? I I, I don't mind Prescott. He went right up in my estimation uh, in my estimation when he um, when he lamped that guy who chucked an egg at him. <laughs> oh, fair play. More human. I think more politicians should um, fling their fists around. Yeah, just punch members of the general public. <laughs> I think it would be a more engaging. No, we take it more seriously. If Politics. If there's <coughs> flailing their arms around like a windmill. Yeah, and people would be more likely to become involved in politics. I mean, a lot, of, a lot of people don't even know who they They wouldn't know who the Chancellor of the Checker is. They don't know who the leader of the opposition is. They're just not interested in politics. It's because but, they don't get enough publicity. Well, if somebody came along and said, Hello, I'm your Member of Parliament. Uh, I'd like to chat with you about community matters. Um, and I'm sorry, I'm not interest, remotely interested in politics. So he smacked him in the mouth. Well, he'd take an interest then, wouldn't he? Yeah. Which politician would you most like to be punched by? Oh, um, not Theresa May. Um, <clears throat> John Major. <laughs> Do I have to give you a reason for it as well? Mm -hmm. Well, not, there's not a real reason other than that. I can't imagine him doing it that hard. Yeah. Now, I knew you were going to go there. Yeah. And my thought is, we all thought that he was this boring grey person. And his wife would serve him his dinner, he'd say, Lovely peas, Norma. And yet, all the time, he was scuttling Edwina Curry. Yeah. Hidden depths. Now, I wouldn't nominate him to be my puncher because he might have hidden depths there as well. Nah. He might secretly train in a boxing gym or something. Oh, yeah. He's a, he's a master of taekwondo or something. Mm. But the thing is, what did you say? Who would you like to punch you? Mm. Right, so that's a punch, isn't it? It's not being beaten up by. Well, and the other thing is, are they drunk at the time? Because most people are when they punch me. So, what you want is to be punched by someone who hasn't got a reputation for then going on and enjoying a right good. <laughs> hmm. I know what you're thinking of Margaret Thatcher, aren't you? No, no. I mean, you could actually mention that, dead or alive, who would you like to be punched by? And then you'd need to um, clarify whether this person is dead whilst they punch or still alive when they do it. Because that makes quite a difference. I'm not sure how the former would work in terms of logistics. <clears throat> Figure it out. Well, you could have them stuffed and put an electric motor in them, I suppose. Yeah, that could be more dangerous, couldn't it? No, very dangerous, I would have thought. Which politician would you most like to sleep with? Ah, that's a good one. I'm not going to say John Major this time. <laughs> <laughs> They're not really <coughs> known for being particularly attractive uh, 
political leaders, are they? Two words, Anne Whittacombe. What about them? Is that your choice? Oh, yeah. Fucking hell. <sighs> I'd love to have a go on Anne Whittacombe. With or without her hair? Oh, is it? No. Um, well, she wants to shave. I can't take that one seriously. I'm not a fan of the Shaven Haven. No, 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 no. Another head. She had a bald head at one point, didn't she? Did she? I think so. I might be thinking of somebody else. I might be thinking of oh, somebody... Oh, was she in the National Front? No, I might be thinking of uh, somebody who did an impression with other who's got a bald head. Your Brenner? No, it's not him. Telly Savalas? No, it's not him. Bruce Forsyth? He's not bald, is he? Yes, he is. Well, I mean, he's dead, but... It's not the same. <clears throat> Have you ever seen him without his wig? What, Bruce? Yeah. Um, probably. Because he used to not have a wig too much in the early days, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. When he looked like a, um, <clears throat> a TV repairman. Mm. And then miraculously all of his hair grew back. Yeah, and nobody questioned him. Well, the thing is, you just... The, the longer you see somebody with that, the more you assume that that's what they've got. Okay, <clears throat> let's have a game of um, famous people who wear wigs or toupees. And we have to take it in turns to say one, and if you can't come up with one within three seconds, you're out and the other person wins. Okay, do you want to start then? So I understand the rules properly. Okay, well, I'll go with Bruce for Um Okay. I'd have gone for Bruce Forsyth as well. Yeah, well, <laughs> you didn't. I did. <laughs> um, so under the rules of the game, you have I, to I go. You, you have to go for somebody else. Terry Wogan. Who did I say? Oh, Bruce. Frankie Howard. Oh, Frankie Howard. That's a good one. Dave Grohl. Never heard of him, but I'll give you that. <laughs> Well, I can't question it, because I don't, I don't know who he is. Yeah, he's, he's definitely got a wig. Uh, Tony Blackburn. Oh, Tony. Tony Blackburn. And surrounding areas. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> I thought it'd be fun to compile all of the people who have surnames as uh, northern towns. Okay. Yeah. Because there's quite a few. I don't? Yeah. Okay, let's... I think. Um, Tim Leeds. Yeah, I'm not sure who that is, but that's a, that's a city, but it still counts. Uh, cities, villages, all towns, all fine. He used to work with my mother. Is he famous? No. Mike Lee. Okay. You did an expression as if you didn't, you never heard of him then. Emlyn Thomas. Thomas. Well, Emlyn. Isn't that the name of Newcastle Emlyn? I don't know. I'm sure that's a place. Emlyn. Could be. But we all. Well, we're on empty. <coughs> Edward Blackpool. Is there someone called Edward Blackpool, really? <laughs> no. Mark Radcliffe. It's got to be in with a set. Is Radcliffe a place? Yeah. Okay. Um, Clark Kent. 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 Kent's a, a county. Well, it's still a place, isn't it? It's a fictional character. you got hair in your room? Yeah? <laughs> have you not? No, I didn't have this morning. Oh, yeah, I still haven't now. Uh, Name three fish that begin and end with the letter K. <sighs> begin and end with the letter K? Yeah. Three of them. Yes. That, that is the challenge. I'm never going to get that. You give up? Yeah, I can you think of one. Kill a shark. <laughs> kill a shark. Quick save frozen haddock. <laughs> and Kilmarnock. Which is a place yeah. in Scotland.
That's all for today, folks. <laughs>